Hey folks, Mark here with you again, new view doorsman. Just thought I'd shoot a little video today of uh, this belt pack survival kit I got made up. I know I haven't been posting a lot of videos to the channel here lately, because, uh, well, I haven't been doing a whole lot with everything on the go, so just kind of staying home. So yeah, I'll just go ahead, like I said, show you this. This is just what I got done right now. Been making adjustments to it for the past few years. Now, all I got right now for I got a clean canteen, 800 milliliter water bottle, and I just got a carabiner, and I just clip that on to this little notch, this section of belt there. And I rest it up on here, and what I'm going to do to get it to stay in place is probably pick up some of those uh, Velcro uh, gear straps down to Dollarama, and just wrap them around, and then I hold it in place, hold my canteen in place that way so it's not rattling around. And I kind of base this kit off the... Uh, Dave Canterbury's like five C's of survival. If you're familiar with Dave Canterbury, then you'll know what I'm talking about. So that's one of the C's there is a container. Um, second container I have is just this uh, 12 ounce cup, clean can or not clean canteen, uh, Kelly kettle cup. I just added that in there because the one that gives me a second container gives me something like a boil water and make tea. Excuse me, make tea. And a small enough that it fits in the kit, no problem at all. Third item. Just a uh, more light my fire knife. I've had for a few years. Good quality knife. Thinking about upgrading to uh, one of those more companion sparks, just because it is the companion model, and while well, the blade on it obviously is a little bit bigger, on the companions is a little bit bigger than the blades on these, a little bit wider, and a little touch longer, I believe. But just the same, that's still a good knife. And like I say, I could do light batoning with it if I want it to or make you know use it to make wedges and stuff to split wood um, I usually always got a Swiss army knife in my pocket um, whether it be a Swiss or you know an SAK recruit or a champ or a hiker or camper or something like that so basically with this knife here and for the SAK I can do a lot of small you know i could do food prep uh carving tasks various tasks right with those two knives um next thing i got here is some cordage i got three different lots of cordage here um i got some paracord i believe it's uh well i bought it at canadian it's the paracord you buy at canadian tire so i think it comes in 50 foot sections and i cut a bit off it so it's probably like i don't know between 30 to 40 feet now because i cut some off and used uh for my hiking boots i replaced the laces in them with this and i cut some off because i wanted to see what the inner strands were like if they were actual you know pieces of line or if it was like the real cheap stuff um, because I had some before, and when I cut it, all the inner strands they just frayed right apart, and so they were. I mean, there's no you know, you'd probably burn it, I suppose, but that was about it. Right? You wouldn't be able to use it for fishing line or traps or anything like that, like you know, most of us use paracord for. But this stuff here, it is seven inner strands, like regular paracord, so at least it's half decent that way. And I gotta say it's fairly decent cordage. Um, next I got some just some twine. 
Um, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's bank line. It looks similar to it, and it does have a tire into it, but um, the tire comes out really easy, and the line does tend to uh, wear some. But I mean, it's good for you know ridge lines or whatever, or tying down, you know, whatever, whatever you use line for. And then over here, I just got uh, I think about a ten or fifteen foot hank of uh, jute twine. And various uses for jute one again, you know, use of tying things, use of tinder. So, always good to have on. So, like I say, you can see the theme here of the five C's, right? You got container, cutting tool, cordage. Um, I did have a pot, I did have a folding saw put in here as well, but I took that out because the blade on it was gone dull on the one I had. So I gotta just replace. I'm gonna just replace out the blade, or uh, either that or pick up a new saw, because I don't know if you can buy the blades for that particular model I have, but I can't see why not. But yeah, so once I get the blade changed out on that, I'm gonna put it back in. I tried sharpening it, but uh, couldn't really get an edge back to it. But uh, yeah, so like I said, I'll be adding that back in there afterwards. Here I just got uh, lighter, big lighter matches, and I just got these put in a well, supposedly a waterproof bag. It came out of a pair of uh, swim trunks I had. It was a little pocket in there, and I just cut it out and uh, for true swim trunks. And the zip just folds over and zip uh, zip locks up. I just put a piece of gorilla tape over just to help seal it a little bit better make it a little bit more durable but yeah so just a pack of matches and a big lighter there for backup if there is anybody familiar with the light my fire knives you know there's a ferro rod there so so that's a combustion and cutting tool all in one here I just have a uh, small pocket stone it's not the greatest but it'll do the job in a pinch here just got a little ziplock baggie of some uh, hair bands <laughs> just because i had no ranger bands at the time and these are stronger than just regular rubber bands so hair bands i mean buying at dollar store a couple bucks a pack or whatever they're great right like i said they'll last up longer than regular rubber bands and if you don't have any inner tubes for ranger bands is always good um, in here now this kit was pieced together from previous kits I've had so some of the stuff I've had in other kits um, it's just a ziploc bag I have a small bit of flagging tape um, <laughs> when they came out I bought one of those Bear Grylls ultimate survival knives to try it out and well, I no longer have the knife. I did take, like, the uh, little survival booklet and the signaling uh, chart that was on the back that came with it. And, you know, always good, if nothing else. It'll, you know, give you some signals right in the woods or even just something to read, just keep your mind occupied. And on the back, mind, don't mind the writing, I <laughs> repurpose this bag. But I just have in there an old card, and I have some Gorilla Tape wrapped around to it. I think probably 10, 12 feet of Gorilla Tape. So some more cordage there. Cloth tape, you know, cordage. Um, in this bag here, in this box, I just have a little first aid kit. And it's one of them dollar store first aid kits, and I just threw it in a Ziploc bag just to keep it somewhat water resistant. And I mean, while the bag is not super sturdy or anything it uh i could use it collect water if need be like i said it's not super sturdy bag so but it'll do right and here i got some uco matches got 25 ucos in there and strikers you can see i've tried them out a few times and i got the extra strikers in there so that's another cut combustion device i have there and here, 
What I have in here is some waterproof matches, but I got them done up with uh, it's uh, wrapped in Vaseline cotton balls, wrapped in Vaseline. So when you light them up, that acts as a wick, and it helps keep your match going a little longer to help get a fire going. Especially if you're in windy conditions, wet conditions, or you know you got a little bit of wet water, whatever, right? Or wet tinder it helps just helps get it going here i got a uh, two person one to two person sol survival blanket emergency blanket we're all familiar with those so it's kind of moving on to shelter there now and here also in shelter portion cover shelter it's just some 45 gallon garbage bags I know, like Dave says, 55 gallon drum liners, but they're hard to find where I live in, <laughs> where I live too. So I just used the 45 gallon ones. I mean, cut them open. <laughs> Going to do the same job as a 45 liter. You still use them for a poncho or whatever. So yeah, that's the uh, inside of this pouch. Uh, anybody's wondering, this is just a uh, field line waste pack. I just bought it at Walmart. They usually carry them during hunting season. If anybody's wondering where I got it, and and uh, over here I have a uh, paracord, so there's some more cordage I have there. I don't wear this one because it has this shackle for the link, and I find it a pain, pain the butt to try to do up by myself, one handed. So I just put it on here. Has some backup cordage if I ever need it. I do have another paracord bracelet. Um, I'm not sure where it's to right now, but uh, yeah, it's got just the clips, so I just clip them together. And on that, there's a whistle, a compass, and a ferro rod, small ferro rod. And surprisingly enough, the compass on it actually is accurate. I've tested it with the compass on my phone, and it actually is accurate, so it'll help in a pinch. Right? I mean, you're not gonna, it's not, not gonna be my main compass, but hey. At least it's something to get you home, right? If need be. Here I have a small fishing kit. Just a plain old tackle box. And like I said, I got some more of that uh, bank line <laughs> or whatever it is. But what I did, I just uh, took the strands apart and just used the uh, single strand. And I have just a uh, little swivel on the end and here I have some 10 pound test fishing line and just on a little reel I made up just carved it of a piece of wood I had downstairs again I got a swivel attached to that as well in here I have an assortment of weights and jigs and lures and swivels hooks there this will basically catch anything I need around here like here in Newfoundland I mean most you're gonna catch if you're if I if I happen to get lost somewhere around salt water um, that'll catch um, what we while well, we call Connors here it's just ocean perch for anybody not from Newfoundland um, sculpins you know um, mackerel cod stuff like that if need be um, which in the survival situation, it'll all be eat. Um, and fresh water, I mean, we got, uh, brook trout, landlocked salmon, rainbow trout, speckled trout, uh, wild Atlantic salmon, if need be, right? That'll all catch. All I need to do is find some bait out in the woods and, you know, dig a few worms or from around the ocean, dig a few clams or get some periwinkles or something like that, right? And there you go. I got some more hooks here. This is some mustache snail hooks. Uh, number two. There's six in this pack. So they're good. That'll help me catch bigger fish. And I have smaller, various size hooks in there as well. <laughs> 
What is it, Dave Canterbury says? Big fish catch, big hooks catch big fish, but small hooks catch all the fish. And it's been my luck. I've used uh, like number eight size snelled hooks catching brook trout and end up having to take home some small brook trout because they swallowed the hook. So at least doing it that way too by using bigger hooks too and just in regular fishing keeps me from hooking. Uh, well, I'm able to release smaller trout if I want to because I don't have to worry about swallowing the hook so much. Here I just got the uh, roll of one inch Gorilla Tape. So that's more like cloth tape cordage. And in here, I'm not going to open it up because it's too hard to open one handed. But in here, I have some snares for snaring rabbits or game like grouse, partridge, squirrels, whatever. But yeah, so I just have some snares in there, brass snares. Um, anybody that's used brass snares knows they're not that good for catching rabbits um on a regular basis but the saw we're legally allowed to use on the island portion of newfoundland due to pine martin but i mean if i got lost in a survival situation if i was worried about breakage i'd probably just braid well not so much braid i'd probably just twist two or three of those together and then set them that way and uh, that would help a bit with breakage right we're also allowed to use six strand pitcher core which is good to carry too. Because um, again, you can twist that together too. So instead of six strand, you can make a 12 strand or an 18 strand. And uh, 18 strand will definitely hold a rabbit. Um, I've heard stories from family members about that, but I'm not going to get into. But um, I'm, if you're from Newfoundland, you watch this channel and you're a younger person, you may have heard it from your grandpa stories from your parents or grandparents about that or you may have even done it yourself <laughs> but anyway regardless so yeah that's basically just my kit there i'm just going back up here now because again i'm still filming this all on my phone here but yeah so that's basically my little waste pack survival kit i think roughly probably weighs about three or four pounds but i mean i got enough in here that i wouldn't need to take a day pack if i didn't want to I could just strap that on and go for a walk in the woods and be fine. Because um, like I say, I usually, if I'm going for a walk in the woods, I usually always have a belt knife on me anyway. And it's you, that belt knife is usually full tang, so I could use that in place of an axe if I needed to. For splitting wood if I wanted to, but I mean, reality is... I know how to carve wedges, so I mean, I just use wedges for splitting wood, and that, you know, there's ways around everything, but yeah, so basically, I could, if need be, I could survive at least a few nights in the woods with this, if I absolutely had to, because like I say, when I go in, I usually have what I'm wearing on my body, plus, um, like I say, everything in this kit. Now, the only thing I don't have in here or that I do have to add in is, like, some tea bags and stuff. But even that's not a real big deal because, I mean, you can make tea out of a lot of different leaves or newt in the woods. And here in Newfoundland, we have a wide variety of berries during the summer seasons. In regards to strawberry, wash, you know, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, parched berries, bunch berries, squash berries. So, I mean, I could pick the leaves from a lot of those and make tea like a... You know, bun um, I can't remember the proper term on them. I think, um, yeah, I'm not even going to try to remember the proper term right now. We call them bunch berries. Um, just like you'll see them sometimes when you're walking through the woods. You see like three or four, I think it's three or four leaves. It's four leaves and in the center. So these little reddish orange berries. And they are edible. They're not very tasty. They're kind of bland. But, I mean, you know, it's vitamins and minerals if need be. If you're lost, right? Boil it down, make a bit of a jam for yourself or whatever. But, yeah. So, no, that's just my survival kit, like I said. Um, I might add a ferrocene rod to the kit. Um, 
just as another sparking device. Like I said, I do have stormproof matches, lighter um, matches, ferrocene rod on the knife and stuff, but a little bit heavier, you know, thicker ferrocene rod, a little bigger one probably might be good to add to it too. But yeah, so like I said, that's just my kit. If you uh, like the video, feel free to comment and share and, share and like. Subscribe if you feel if you want to. If you uh, see anything that I may be uh, missing from the kit, by all means, you know, leave a comment telling me what it is, what I could add or what I could take out and maybe put in something better. I mean, I'm like everybody else, you know. I'm no expert at none of this. I'm just a just a guy who likes getting out in the woods and trying to be you know prepare myself as best as I can so I don't end up as a statistic in a search and rescue manual but anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one all right guys take care see you later bye